Yes, guys, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCola outside Wembley, where Manchester United have been beaten 3-1 by Chelsea. What a disappointing day it is for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Reds today. Um, absolutely gutted with that one. I'm not gutted with the result. You know what? I can take losing against Chelsea in a game at Wembley. Those kind of things happen. Chelsea are a big club. They're used to winning here at this ground, and we always have big head-to-heads with them. But that performance from Manchester United, that weren't good enough today. That weren't good enough at all. I don't care whether you make 10, 11 changes to the team. Every single player that started today should have been up for it, and they simply weren't. If you go from back to front, David De Gea, it continues to go from bad to worse for David De Gea in between the sticks for Manchester United. That, what was going on for the first goal? Not good enough. Second goal? Definitely not good enough. And a lot of people are calling for the likes of Dean Henderson to come in and, and, and take his spot and all that kind of stuff. But... Whilst I don't want to rush Dean Henderson, and he, he clearly has made errors himself this season, it's hard to knock those, those noises back. It's hard to knock, knock those shouts back when your goalkeeper that is in between the sticks is constantly making errors. And those errors today were big game errors at 0-0, at 1-0. You know, the game's still there to be had at 1-0. The game's still there to be had at 0-0. And once you concede those goals, there's no way back just before half-time, just after half-time. That's not good enough, Dave. And we know how much Dave's done for the club. You know, we know how good he has been for Manchester United over the years. But are we seeing the end to him now? It's hard to say because sometimes you see him pull off some amazing stops. But he's always got a rick in him. And he's costing us. Last year, you could have said he cost us top four. This year, he could have cost us the FA Cup. Um... Abysmal today, abysmal, abysmal goalkeeping and he's not going to be confident with what's in front of him even when you look at what's in front of him, the players that are in front of him, you know, the likes of, you know, Lindelof and Maguire constantly making errors, Victor Lindelof for the first goal, you've got to get by your man, you've got to get in front of Olivier Giroud, you know, not allow him to get in front of you, in front of goal, get to the cross first and get the ball in, especially at that point in the game, come on, we've just had men down injured, Bailly was down injured, Maguire was down injured. So surely Lindelof, your other centre-half, has got to be ready. I know we had a change in shape at that point. I know that. But it's just before half-time. Be on your toes. Be alert. Be ready for something. Be ready to work 200% harder because your, your teammates have just taken knocks. And Harry Maguire, £80 million, he's been given the armband. <laughs> I can't see reason for either of those at the moment when I see him perform sometimes. Look. I think Wambazaka, who wasn't good enough today either, Williams, who also wasn't good enough today either, made a mistake for the second goal. Let's not let these guys get away with it. But Wambazaka, Williams, Lindelof, Maguire, they've all improved our defence, yes. But they also need to step up because we can improve on them in defence if they continue to play like this. And that's the long and short of it. I think Maguire's kind of protected a little bit for the time being because he's the captain. But we know things can change very quickly here. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be ruthless. And they weren't good enough today. And you've got to be worried for your spots in the team if you are playing like that. Because that weren't good enough. That weren't good enough. We made too many changes in the midfield as well. In my opinion, if you were going to make changes, you make them at the back. Maybe one in midfield. I don't know, a McTominay or a Matic or a Fred or something starting. But Pogba, Bruno, you keep them on the pitch. Martial, Rashford... They're confident, they're scoring goals, you keep them on the pitch. To make all those changes, it disrupted the team. We're bringing in players that are probably still in the pre-season mode of their, you know, return to football kind of phase. And we got battered off the park. It was never a game today. Even at 0-0, I, was, I, was, I just could feel it coming. I could feel this kind of... And I think the team selection said that. When you're picking that team, what do your players think that are sitting on the bench? What does Martial think when he's on the bench? Pogba think for a semi-final. Now look, the performance wasn't good enough at the end of the day, but you know, it's got. A, I just feel we went in with the wrong mentality from the start of the game, and you could feel it. You normally feel it when you go to a game. Sometimes you feel it in the crowd that it's not going. to... Obviously, there weren't a crowd here today, but you could feel it just watching it. You could feel it that it was going to go wrong for United today, and it it really did. Matic. His performances have taken a dip since he's got a contract, a new contract. Let's hope that's not the way forward for him from now on because, you know, we want him to get back to that position. We're already short in depth in that area, so we clearly need someone to cover him. You know, 
further field, I thought Bruno didn't have the best of games today. He got a kick in the bollocks at one point. He was getting clamped all over the place. The referee was abysmal. Um, but Bruno's going to have off days. And it, it reminded me of Pogba when Pogba had to play with Daniel James out wide. <laughs> no striker, Rashford, um, you know, M Matic playing poorly, the defence. Like, it reminded me of that. Everyone seemed to get excited and think Bruno had resolved everything at Man United. He hadn't. He's a fantastic player that came in. That coincided with us getting, you know, a few other players back, you know, going on a little bit of a good run. I think Bruno has made a massive impact to the team. I think Bruno has improved us fantastically well. And he scored again today, you know what I mean? He, he shits goals and assists, but he's not the only thing that's going to fix us. We need to make sure the rest of the team is functioning as well. And you can't just play Bruno and think, oh yeah, we'll be all right, Bruno's playing. Because, you know, get it out of your head, Bruno never fixed everything. We needed a number 10, we needed a creative player. He came in and he was that creative player, but we've still got faults in our team. And hopefully what this has shown today, you know, Daniel James, not good enough today, not good enough. I think he's a squad player. Beyond that, nothing more. Shouldn't be starting in semi-finals against Chelsea. Shouldn't be starting in semi-finals against Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? And this goes to people that have been saying, we don't need Sancho, we don't need Grealish, we don't need this, that. We need strength in depth. We need quality coming off the bench because we did not have that today. We didn't have it today. And if we want to rest players, if you want to rest Bruno, if you want to rest Pogba, you can do that if you've got a Grealish coming in or a Jadon Sancho on the bench or whatever. But not this. Not this. We haven't got the quality on the bench to be able to come in. And we've seen over the last couple of weeks, we've, we've battered the first 11. We've played them week in, week out. They're fatigued. They're tired. You could clearly see there was one team that has played three games this week and one team that's had 48 hours more rest. But also, the performance wasn't good enough. And I feel like the approach to a semi-final wasn't good enough. Maybe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is preferring to put, you know, the, the FA Cup to one side for this season and just get Champions League football. And maybe if we're going to get a trophy, you, you, you focus on that Europa League. But I didn't think it had to be an either or today. I didn't think that it had to be an either roar and going into this against a manager that we've beaten three or f three times already this season, you know, scoring eight goals, conceding one and putting on that performance wasn't good enough. I didn't mind if we lost today, but it was the manner of the, you can always lose a game at Wembley against Chelsea, do you know what I mean? It happens, but it was the manner of the defeat that got me today. That wasn't good enough. Now, I hope it was just fatigue. I hope the players were just tired. It was a bad selection. Chelsea had a good day, but I don't even think Chelsea were that good. I don't even think they had to be that good today. And that says it all. They've probably never had an easier semi-final and this is one of the worst Chelsea sides we've seen. So I'm massively, massively disappointed. I don't want to overreact and go mental because I know it's been a hard couple of weeks for the boys. They've had to dig in, they've had to work hard, they've had to fight, you know, to, to make this happen. But it's a flat one. And I suppose the fans are glad they weren't in here for this today. The fans are glad they weren't in here for it today because that would have been a sickener. But who knows, maybe the fans can push your team over the line when they're a little bit tired, a little bit fatigued, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, man, got it. Absolutely disappointed. Only got ourselves to blame. Only got, you know, the manager's decisions, the players. You've only got those guys to blame today. And whilst the referee was fucking shocking, like, I seen Pogba get booked after he hadn't booked a Chelsea player all game and they were clamping, man. Like, I was thinking, what? Mike Dean was awful today, but it weren't his fault why we lost. Do you know what I mean? It weren't his fault why we lost, so, yeah. And the Premier League, FA, whoever. Are you seriously doing this to us with the fixtures and the games to pile up and all that stuff? Really? Three games we had in five days, six days. These men have been chilling since Tuesday. That didn't help either, but look, you have to put your excuses to the side. This is Manchester United at the end of the day, and you have to be ready for every single game. You know, when we go on and we've won doubles in the past or we've won the treble in the past, we never complained about fixture pile up then. We never complained about, oh, them lot have had more rest than us, this, that, and the other. We just dusted ourselves down and got along with it. But what we also had at that time was great strength in depth. And that's something that we haven't got at the moment. So hopefully it's a message to the board. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you're liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, keeping it locked to Strep for Paddock. I have been Adam McCola. Thank you for being with us throughout the day. I'll see you soon. Till then.
Amarvia.